Friday the 21st and uh, it's one o'clock here in New Mexico and I'm getting ready to go on a overnight camping trip on the ATV. I'm out here in the beautiful desert just outside of Socorro, New Mexico in a place called the Quebradas. Quebradas is Spanish for basically uh, it refers to as the breakage and uh, as you can tell there's a lot of broken land out here a lot of crevices a lot of canyons and uh, right now I'm just riding through a mesquite forest so all I can think of right now is barbecue <laughs> that sounds good but uh, it's all right tonight I'm gonna have uh, some beef fajitas which is gonna be pretty good itself so yeah, I think I'm going to go this way on the trail. I'm going to try to head up high over here and take a straightaway all the way to the back. But it's beautiful out here. On the forecast today is uh, overcast skies and maybe late tonight. We might be looking at a shower and tomorrow is also calling for some showers as well so we'll see what happens here in new mexico we're a very dry state for the most part and uh, i usually just say i'll believe that moisture when i see it yeah i think this is the way i want to go Just look at that beautiful backdrop over there. That is gorgeous. Yeah, here's that little hill that I need. This is what it's like out here in New Mexico. We got a desert scene down this way. And of course, we do got some mountain rides, but uh, that'll probably come later this year. For some reason, our forests, they usually uh, close up the, the forest service access just uh, because of the snow and they don't want to mess up the roads and whatnot. So I anticipate, depending uh, on the season that we had, and this year has been a pretty good winter for the mountains, that our forest service will start to open probably about the middle of April. So we got to just under two months before we could start climbing back up into the mountains and I'm looking forward to that. But until then, this is uh, the stomping grounds for now. It's just the desert scene and it's beautiful. Temperatures right now is about 50 degrees, a little bit of a breeze. So it kind of feels like it's in the 40s. And uh, it actually doesn't feel bad on the four-wheeler. feels pretty good. That's one thing I could appreciate about New Mexico is, you know, we have our high country and we also have our desert low and you know, to be able to explore opposites is just very cool. Something about the desert, and then there's just something about the uh, high country up in the mountains. It's one thing I think we're pretty blessed is uh, we get the best of both worlds out here. carrier is uh, dragging on a little bit of these uh, dirt uh, rocky seas right here. Probably have to make a couple adjustments for the next time I go out camping on the quad. Oh yeah. Here's a little bit of some terrain here. Got some rocky stuff right there.
there's a spring right here. A little bit of water in it. Life or death situation. You can definitely make that work. Absolutely, you can make that work. In fact, uh, through this area right here, I don't know exactly where, but the uh, the Grand Enchantment Trail runs through here. And that's a trail that starts off in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, comes into New Mexico, uh, crosses through here, goes up that way towards the uh, Manzano Mountains, goes through there and then ends up uh, in the Sandia Mountains in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. The trail's about uh, 730 miles, somewhere around there. So uh, yeah, definitely uh, anybody hiking that uh, Grand Enchantment Trail, they could definitely get some water out of there. And then I know there's another spring uh, not too far from here, maybe two miles, that's called uh, Barium Springs. And uh, I'd like to go check that out tomorrow if the rain doesn't progress like they're saying. But uh, we'll see. I don't know how this is going to work going over this with uh, my crate carrier. It's kind of dragging. That didn't hit too hard thankfully but those little ATV bridges are pretty cool you don't have to get down and open up the fences just uh, being by yourself it just you get a little bit of solitude silence and it's just a good way to kind of become in tune with yourself just think about your Self, your life, your family, friends, uh, just it's, it's a great feeling just to escape and you know not have anybody around and you know it's just something I encourage anybody who has never done it to go and try it. You just got to get over the hurdle of not being afraid to do it uh, solo and uh, I think that's probably the the hardest part is just mind over matter for some folks if they've never done a solo adventure but they're fun I like them I think first things first is let me get some weight off the four-wheeler probably get camp set up get all those chores done and let's go have a stroll and take a look at some of these beautiful little places in here home camp is just right up here in fact we just passed it but the access is over here There you are guys, there's our campfire ring, and here's the camp, here's home, a lot of cows have come through here, dang it, <laughs> oh well, and there's firewood right there. Well guys, I've already started to do a little bit of camp chores. Kind of cleaned out the fire ring from the last time that I used it. I need to organize the rocks and just kind of build it back up. Looks like the cows uh, kind of stepped on it a little bit, kind of knocked it all over. But I'm just surprised by the amount of cows that have kind of come in here and made this kind of their uh, sanctuary, it looks like. And I'm wondering if it's just because of this big tree that provides uh, shade for them. Who knows? But 
it's all right. Here in New Mexico, we have a lot of cows and that's just something we have to deal with sometimes when we're in the outdoors. So they don't bother me at all. And you know, if they're in the camp tonight, it's okay. I just hope they uh, don't step on the tip. <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> what a rude awakening that would be. Dang. But uh, yeah, just gonna chop up some wood off of this dead tree right here and uh, just welcome this awesome evening in. It's so beautiful. Got the tent set up. Nice spacious tent in there. I love this tent. It's a marmot two-person tent and uh, it's done me well in all sorts of conditions. Snow, rain, wind, great tent. Alright guys, bed is all set up. Sleep pad is a Neo Air X-Therm. It's an awesome sleep pad. It's got an R rating of 5.7 I believe and it sleeps plenty warm. And then I got a Sport Teton uh, zero degree bag. This black thing that you're seeing right here is a Sea to Summit thermal reactor. And to top it off, I got a pillow, compliments of my wife, and it reads, baby, it's cold outside. <laughs> and I think it's going to get cold outside, so fits the theme perfect. Thank you, Amber. Yep, my uh, backpacking pillow is in the wash, so just washing that up. I uh, guess I didn't take care of it after the last trip, so kind of smelts a little bit after a little while from being in storage, but... Uh, yeah, we're ready here. Heck yeah. There's the Magdalena Mountains right there. Sun's getting ready to go down. Storms are building over the mountains as we are expected. Moisture on the forecast late tonight through tomorrow. And what a beautiful scene. Well guys, I decided to go ahead and have a little bit of a look. have a look at uh, one of those old homesteads. I'm definitely going to go to the one that I know how to find and I'm not exactly sure where the other one is. Maybe if I get a little bit higher I could uh, see it. I'll go check that one out as well. enjoy coming up on these uh, homesteads you know when I see these old places immediately I just start to wonder you know who were these people uh, what brought them here how was it to actually live here off-grid in this time frame that they lived in you know our time frame it's just so much different than from when they grew up got a lot of technology and a lot of stuff that uh, makes life much more easier. You know, one thing that they didn't have was electricity and they didn't have hands-on access to water day in and day out. You know, they relied on Mother Nature to provide and they relied on fire, they relied on 
you know, the summer solstice, the winter solstice to kind of know when the seasons were going to change. In fact, uh, northern New Mexico, there's a place called Chaco Canyon, and I've never been there, but from what I understand is there's a section of that ruin that they actually were able to figure out and understand the you know the summer solstice and the winter solstice it's something that I like to go and see and you know go and have a visit so for this one there's no ATV bridge so definitely got to go through uh, the gate here but I can already see where that uh, ruin is, or homestead, I should say. Oh, this is different. They actually got this uh, wired off, so they, they don't want nobody to come through here no more. You actually used to be able to come through here. It's definitely not private property. There's nothing posted as far as uh, private property goes, but uh, I'm assuming this area right through here, you know, just because of the old homestead that there might be other stuff out here and they just don't want people to come in here and mess around with it and vandalize it and whatnot. But uh, there it is right there. In fact, uh, what I could do is take my drone over there and fly around it and see uh, what it looks like. And maybe while I'm in the sky, I could actually see where the other homestead is that's over there and we might be able to get to that one just because uh, there is no fencing over there but uh, yeah I used to be able to come through here and go off that way but uh, not no more and like I said it's not private property this is all BLM land Bureau of Land Management for New Mexico so I think uh, they just don't want traffic to go in there because uh, of that guy right there that homestead and the other one's up on the hillside, so nobody's going to be able to uh, get up there and drive to it and whatnot. And it's more hidden, so, you know, I'm having a trouble finding it myself. But, all right, let's get the drone up and see what it looks like. Let's go check out that... Uh, homestead over there. I couldn't find that other uh, homestead out here, but I know it's in here. I've seen it before. I must be thinking of the wrong canyon, but I know it's probably within a half mile from here, and it's not that far off the uh, main Arroyo Wash, but uh, I made it back to camp. The sun is going down, and I'm gonna go ahead and make a campfire and get dinner going. Right now, temps are reading 49 degrees, which isn't bad. And there's a breeze of, I'd say, 10 to 15 miles an hour. It was a little bit windy just a bit ago. and uh, But anyways, with the wind chill, it's bringing it down probably to the mid uh, 40s. But uh, probably feels a lot cooler than what it really is just because of the gloomy, overcast skies.
Oh yeah. I think those are just about done. Heck yeah. I'm just enjoying myself around a campfire, dinner served, and all I can say is this is such a great evening. Mm. Just finished up dinner and it's been such a beautiful evening. The wind is still calm and it's just nothing better than this. It's just awesome. What a fun day, and I'm exhausted. I'm gonna go ahead and go to bed. It's just after uh, nine o'clock, maybe 9.30, somewhere's in there, and I was up since four, 4.30 this morning, went to bed about midnight, so I'm pretty exhausted. Good night, guys, I'll see you in the morning. Home sweet home. Good morning, everyone. Last night was a uh, rainy night started rain probably about one o'clock in the morning and it's just been kind of drizzling here and there and this morning it's uh, starting to pick up a little bit harder than it backs out so if it's coming in waves but I get the joy of packing up in the rain yay <laughs> but uh, today's plan was to go and take a nice ATV tour go check out a spring and uh, go and check out some of these canyons that are out here but I think I'm gonna have to bag that and come back to this place and just do a day trip to uh, go and explore some of these canyons so I'm just gonna make some coffee and figure out when's a good time to break down <laughs> really there isn't a good one in the rain but it's okay <laughs> it's part of uh, being outdoors and you know especially planning something like this when there's weather on the forecast so all right guys talk to you later hey guys I'm in the final stages of breaking down camp I just got to put the tent up I decided to go ahead and skip on coffee I went ahead and looked at Doppler radar because I do have a little bit of service here and off to the southwest of here there's a big swell of rain that's coming and slowly as I'm packing up it stopped raining I can see the Magdalena Mountains disappearing, so uh, that's a general ballpark how close that rainstorm is to coming back in. So I wasn't planning on staying out here another night, so I just decided, hey, this is no better time than to pack up and go now that the rain stopped before the rain comes back again. So that's where I'm at. Hey guys, I am well on my way home after this awesome overnight solo ATV trip that I took. Had such a great time. I woke up to some rain this morning and so I went ahead and packed it up and went on home. I was going to take another tour around some of these canyons out there that I've never been to. I'll just have to come out here on a day trip uh, when there's a little better weather. So uh, anyhow, I'd like to thank you again and until the next one, get outside guys, life is short.